instructional videos, but I am very well aware that during this time, parents are basically becoming homeschool teachers on the fly. And one complaint I've seen over and over again on Facebook and other forms of social media is this complaint about what parents are calling new math. And I, I didn't know what this was, and uh, my daughter's four, so I thought, well, I'll encounter it soon enough. But then I actually saw this new math, so somebody actually shared a picture, and thank you, I forget who it was, but thank you so much for doing that, because when I saw it, I was like, it's a puzzle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. So I sat down, and plugged away at it for 10 minutes or so, and I came to the conclusion that new math, so much easier than old math. I like math a lot, actually. Um, I spend a lot of time in my career and in my studies doing math. I'm you know, much more comfortable with it than I used to be. And the reason I used to dislike it so much goes back to the whole way that we used to do multiplication and division. It was complete nonsense. I hated it. It was not intuitive to me. And I really just, until I, until I got my hands on a calculator, I really didn't think I liked math that much. Then once I got my hands on a calculator and could start doing stuff that was actually interesting, then I started to like it. And since then, I've been learning and developing lots of different solutions to make math easier. I wish I'd come up with this one. I can't take any credit for it. All I'm going to do is show you parents at home how to do it so your kids don't fall behind and their teachers don't give them a hard time when they show their work. Um, so let's jump right in. So this whole uh, new math concept, um, I'm going to stop with the air quotes. I know it's really annoying. Um, it, contains this ability to multiply large non, you know, zero numbers together uh, in what looks to me in what I call a multiplication matrix. I have no idea what the teachers are calling it. You don't need to remember that word. Um, but that's what I'm calling it because that's what it looks like to me. And what I'm seeing, what I was seeing was two, you know, random large numbers that the kids had to multiply together and they had to create a matrix um, for solving the problem. This was the show your work bit. So uh, when I saw that, a lot of people were saying the same thing. I don't get what they've done here, but this is how the kids are doing it. Help, what do I do? Okay, so I figured it out and here's how it works. And it's fantastic, by the way. You're never gonna wanna go back. So let's create just on the fly two very, very random, you know, difficult to multiply numbers. Let's say 847 multiplied by, uh, I don't know, 73. Ugly, right? Those, uh, those numbers are just, are just so ugly. So is my whiteboard placement. So if it falls, I'll make another video. <laughs> All right, so when you look at these numbers, they look very undigestible. The old way was 847 multiplied by 73, and then you start doing this, doing this, and carrying ones, and adding to, ridiculously convoluted, super over-involved, way over-complicated. Stop doing it now. Life will get easier for you if you do it this way. So 847, let's start with this number. Very difficult to work with. A number like that, what's not difficult to work with is this, 800, 40, and seven, because Think about it, 800 plus 40 plus seven gives you 847. So all I've done is I've broken this out into the places that are identified in this number, the ones, tens, and the hundreds, and I've laid them out like this. So we're gonna do the same thing down the side of the matrix for the number 73. Now we only have tens and ones here, so we're gonna have 70 and three, all right? This is, that's all we've done, just broken these out into numbers that don't suck. All right, hang on. So now I'm going to use my laughy ass art skills to draw a matrix. Ta da! Beautiful, isn't it? I'm not a very good artist. So now what we want to do, and we've all seen tables like this before. I mean, it may have been a long time for some of you, but multiplication tables, which is something we've all encountered, basically works on this principle. Whatever's here, whatever's here, and here's the product or of those two things in some way. So what we're going to start doing is multiplying our numbers together. So we're going to multiply 800 
by 70. See, the first block here corresponds with the 70 and with the 800. So in here, so we're going to multiply 800 by 70, which is very easy. 56,000. 8 by 7 is 56. Stick as many zeros on as you got, and uh, like 1, 2, 3 zeros. 8 by 7 is 56. There you go. That was for those of you who <laughs> don't multiply a lot in your heads anymore, and I know I don't either, so it's always good to review the basics. Um, and then we do the same thing. So the next space, because this is a joke. Oh, 40. Okay, so we're going to multiply 70 by 40. That gives us 2,800. Then we're going to multiply 7 by 70. That's our last block here left over. 7 times 7 is 49. Stick a 0 on. 490. There you go. So what I like to do, because I'm a hyper-organized person when it comes to solving problems, otherwise it's very easy to get muddled and forget what you're working with. So we're done with this 70. We're never going to use it again, so let's just kill it. I could have erased it, but I don't know where my clock is. So now we're going to do the same thing along the bottom. We're going to take the 3, multiply it by 800. That'll give us 2400. Then we're going to take the 3, multiply it by the 40, and that's going to give us 120. And then 3 by 7 is 21. Okay, so now we're done with the 3. In fact, we are now also done with the 7, with the 40, and with the 800. You can forget about all these numbers. You just want to deal with the products of what you've just worked out. So now comes the part that I like least of all, and that's if we got to add them all up. So there's your seat work right there. So we're going to start with 56,000 plus 2,400 plus 2,800 plus 120 plus 490 plus 21. So we've got this column here. Unfortunately, this is where things are going to look real familiar. From here on in, there, well, there are some tricks to adding, but we'll deal with that in another video. Let's just assume we've got to go through and brute force add these things together. And parents, check on your calculators, because if your kid does it right, use your calculator, you'll know it. If you do it right, use your calculator, you'll know it. I would use my calculator, too. So here we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 9, 11. 9 plus 2 is 11, 13, 5, 14, 15, 14, 11, and 6. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do this again because I'm really careless when it comes to column adding. Just my eyesight's not great, so combination of carelessness and, and genuine vision. <laughs> so, zero, 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 001, yes. 14, 5, 0, 0, 0, 2, 6, 1, 18, 11, 5, 1 is 6. All right, so our answer to this problem, this adding these columns, or adding these numbers rather, gives us this number right there. That is your answer. Your answer is... 61,831. You've shown your work, it's new math, so much faster. And if it's not faster, it, this requires you to carry very little wasted, like, you don't waste memory doing this. So this is how machines do it. Uh, and, they, and machines do not waste memory. You, you don't store things in memory if you don't have to. It's very inefficient. So the whole point of this this matrix here is that you can now combine these numbers in a way that is fast, intuitive, and doesn't make you want to throw your, your whiteboard or whatever out the window. So I'm okay, I'm gonna stop stalling. I'm mostly I'm just stalling because this thing is um has uh, decided that there we go. Alright, so let's check the answer. 